What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from dopetechdaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a highly requested video. This is gonna be my top battery saving tips for the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. Now I already did a video talking about battery life and my top problems and solutions for the Galaxy S8. This one's gonna focus entirely on battery life and nothing else. The Google Keep document as usual will be linked below if you guys wanna check these tips out in text form. So let's get right to it. The first tip is a very simple one, is to turn off the auto brightness on your phone. You can go into display settings and do this. A lot of the first few tips are very simple and can be found in display settings. Some people don't realize that auto brightness using the sensor itself actually does give you poorer battery life. Also, you can adjust this to the smallest minimum level which will be visible. I have it in the middle here because I want you guys to be able to see the phone for the video. But you can turn this down to the smallest readable level indoors and outdoors. That'll save some battery life because the auto brightness sensor sometimes overcompensates. Plus when you're outdoors, you get that extra screen brightness boost. If you're not in a bright area where you don't really necessarily need it, you might wanna turn that down to a lower level if you're concerned with battery life. Uh, the next thing which is also in display settings is the screen resolution. The screen resolution can be adjusted on your Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. I like to leave mine at FHD Plus for when I'm worried about battery life. You can of course go down to HD Plus. WQHD Plus does give you the highest resolution but it's also going to be the one that drains your battery life the most. The next thing that you can do also in display settings is go down to the screen timeout and you can go ahead and change that screen timeout. Now this is set to 30 seconds by default but I highly recommend that if you're interested in saving battery life, that you go ahead and turn that down to the minimum screen timeout, which is 15 seconds. That's gonna make sure that if you just leave your phone idle, the screen's gonna time out after 15 seconds and go off. I've seen a lot of people, including my own mom, she likes to leave her phone there and not press the power key when she's done with it. That means the screen stays on, drains that battery. If you're like me and you press the power key as soon as you're finished using your phone to turn off the screen, you probably don't have to worry about that. But if you're one person who likes to leave the phone sitting there, that might be something to consider. All right, so those are the first three things here we sort of knocked off the list. The next one is to use a dark theme wallpaper and icon pack. Now you guys can see the one that I'm running right here. This is using Action Launcher 3 with the murdered out icon pack. And I'm also running a material black theme from the Samsung theme store. I did make a full tutorial on how to implement this theme. So I'll drop it below. You can get some additional savings by using a fully black wallpaper as well. This one's not fully black, so it doesn't give you the maximum savings from the AMOLED display. But going with a dark theme will definitely save you some battery life overall. The next tip is to use Package Disabler Pro to disable some Samsung bloat, uh, anything that you don't want to use. Now I mentioned this in my previous video, that problems video I was talking about before, but some people wanted me to go through some more details about what in particular I disable. So I want to show you guys the list of things that I have disabled in Package Disabler Pro. I'm also going to drop a full list below uh, XML file that you can import into Package Disabler Pro. Right here it says import from XML and you guys can disable all of the things that I have disabled. I'll also drop a list that I have from XDA that shows all the things that you can safely disable. You may or may not want to disable all of those. You have to look at the actual services. But the things that I have disabled are right here. I disabled the Ant Radio Service, Bixby, Flipboard Briefing, Car Mode, Email from Samsung, Yahoo Finance, Samsung Internet because I use Chrome, uh, Sound Picker, Sound Alive, Samsung Mirror Link, Samsung Setup Wizard. There's a whole lot of other Samsung services you can disable if you don't use them. These are just the ones that I know that I don't use. Again, I'll drop a comprehensive list below if you guys want to check that out about what in particular you should disable and what those various services do. Uh, the next thing is to turn off Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, etc. when you're not actually using them. You could also lump location into there. Now, of course, you can just go into the settings menu up here, quick settings, manually and turn off your Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, etc. If you're not using them, I could just turn NFC off right now because I'm not using it. However, there is a smarter way to go about doing some of these things, and that's by using the app If This Then That. If This Then That is a great app that allows you to uh, cert trigger certain actions based on uh, something happening. So I have several things set up that help me save battery life. For instance, as soon as I get to work, we turn on Wi-Fi. Whenever I get to work, I mute my Android phone, which means I don't have to worry about vibration or the ringer draining any battery or also obviously the ringer going off when I'm in a meeting. Automatically turn your Android device Wi-Fi on when I get home. Turn off Wi-Fi when you leave home to save power. So as soon as you get out of the range of your home, it's going to turn off the Wi-Fi so it's not searching for a Wi-Fi signal. And also perhaps one of the most important ones, if you disconnect from a Bluetooth device, turn off Bluetooth. This basically says if you're not using Bluetooth paired with something, then why have Bluetooth on? And then when, of course, you go back and want to pair up to another device, you'll just go ahead and re-enable your Bluetooth and you'll be good to go. This one especially saves quite a bit of battery life. 
And then of course my final tip, which is one that should seem very obvious, but not everyone realizes this, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus do have a battery saving mode built in. The reason I didn't mention this is my primary method of saving battery life is because the battery saving modes don't give you much granular control. They have very sort of preset things that they do. So if you go into battery here and then you look at the three modes, you either have the battery saving mode off, you have mid or max. If you go into mid, you can see what it does. It decreases the brightness by 10%, sets the screen resolution to FHD+, speed limiter for the CPU speed, background network usage is off, and the always on display in this case uh, is in fact off as well. So turning the always off to on display, of course, is a feature that you can also use to save battery life and Samsung will implement it for you. This will not do any of the things that I mentioned though with if this, then that, or package disabler pro. It also doesn't give you as granular fine control over what it is that you're changing. You can go into customize though and change a few things here, but still not quite as granular control as some of the other things that I mentioned earlier. There's also a maximum, uh, maximum battery saving mode, which will turn the screen resolution down to HD plus. Uh, you also turn off the always on display, etc. And the maximum battery saving mode is a little bit of overkill in my opinion, but if you really need that maximum battery life in order to make a call or get an important text message, this might be something worth looking into as well. You can also select individual apps right here at the bottom and save power by turning off the background processes for these apps. So say Google Plus is draining the largest amount of Instagram. I can tap save power right there. That's going to go ahead and stop those from using my battery uh, whenever I'm not using them but because I want to get notifications in real time, et cetera, for certain apps. I usually do not do that. All right, guys, so that is my full list of tips on how to get better battery life for the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter at the links in the description. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.